Disney presents From Frontierland, The Swamp Fox, The Birth of the Swamp Fox, starring Leslie Nielsen. I've had enough of this. Even bloodhounds couldn't catch that swamp fox in country like this. Come with me. Swamp Fox. That's what Tarleton called me. And I'm much obliged to him for the idea because we'll hole up here by day and we'll strike by night. In the spring of 1780, when Colonel Francis Marion first came to prominence, America's war for independence seemed all but lost. Washington's hard-pressed army was deteriorating in New Jersey, waiting for reinforcements from General Lafayette. But the French were bottled up by a British fleet standing off the mouth of Narragansett Bay. Down at Charleston, General Lincoln and his colonial army faced imminent attack by land and sea. And royal garrisons had already been established along the Carolina frontier from Rocky Mount to the Atlantic. Along this line, it was the enemy's plan to divide the colonies and conquer them one part at a time. Suddenly, to the surprise of Cornwallis, his communications were cut, his supply trains were intercepted, and isolated outpost garrisons were destroyed. In this darkest hour of his country's need, the Swamp Fox had been born. And he and his hardy band of freedom fighters were on the move. To the American patriots who lived and fought throughout those uncertain days, Colonel Marion was a hero, second only to George Washington. Even after the fighting ended, and our new nation began to expand westward. The legend of the Swamp Fox was told and retold around a thousand campfires. The result today is that there are 17 counties and 29 cities and towns scattered throughout the United States that proudly bear the name of Marion. Now this is the first of several stories we will bring you about the daring adventures of America's Robin Hood of the Revolution, the Swamp Fox. Its title, the birth of the Swamp Fox. Now we know why the enemy fleet has been laying on Charleston Harbor all these weeks without firing a shot. Of course. While we watch the sea, they make a surprise attack by land. More likely a combined land and sea attack, Sergeant Jasper. How many marching hours are we from Charleston? Twelve, maybe less. That's all the time we've got. About troop, Sergeant. About troop, oh! Where's the general? In his quarters. Why? Come along and find out. Hope you had a good reason for waking me up in the middle of the night. I believe I have, sir. 
A large enemy force is less than five hours' march from here. They'll have us cut off by daybreak. Five hours? Are you sure of your information, Colonel? I saw it with my own eyes, sir. This explains why the fleet hasn't attacked. They've been waiting for land support. They'll probably throw a force across the Charleston Peninsula, then lay siege. I suggest we evacuate immediately, sir, before we're trapped. Now, let's not be hasty, Colonel. I must have time to think this out. Call an officer's assembly, Major Ori, please. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but there aren't three officers left in the fort outside the sick bay. Well, where are they? McKellar's. He's given a big party, and they all went. Then they're celebrating their own deaths. Who gave them leave? I did. Things were quiet. I thought it would be good for the morale. McKellar is probably thinking about morale, too, sir, in another way. With your permission, sir, this is one party I'd like to break up. By all means, go quickly. I'll dress and join you at once, Major Audie. Yes, sir. Fran, you think McKellar planned it this way? Well, you have to admit Monday night is a strange time to be giving a party. Nobody goes in or out, mister. I hear them say Mr. McKellar threw the key away until the party's over. I told you so. That's right. No one asks you here. Stop shouting at my guests or get out. <laughs> I'll leave when I've said my piece, McKellar. The city of Charleston is in danger. There's a large enemy force marching to attack. Oh, go on, Colonel. You're just afraid we're going to have some fun, that's all. <laughs> oh, that's it. Don't listen to him. Drink up, men. You're all so drunk already, you don't know what McKellar's doing to you. He wants you to stay here. Can't you understand that? Are you accusing me of plotting this party, Colonel Marion? I'm only saying what's obvious, McKellar. Now open that door. I'm leaving. You're not leaving here. Did you give me satisfaction, Colonel? Some other time when you're not so drunk, McKellar. What's your hurry, Colonel? <laughs> You all right, mister? Give me a hand. Oh, oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Give me a hand. You can't stay, my dear. You must go with the governor and Mrs. Rutledge. It doesn't seem right for me to leave. I feel that my duty is here in Charleston. I can't promise to hold the city, Governor, and I see no point in risking your capture. You recall the men, Colonel? I'm sorry, sir. McKellar had too much of a start. They're all out of action for the present, at least. That's most unfortunate. I've decided to defend the city, Colonel Marion. I wish you'd reconsider, sir. It'll be morning until those men at McKellar's will be sober enough even to get back to the barracks. Your leg, Colonel. You're injured. It's a sprain, I think. It won't interfere, sir. You're not staying, Colonel. I have a special mission for you and Major Ori. I want you to see that Governor Rutledge, Mrs. Rutledge, and my wife get safely through the enemy lines before the peninsula is closed off. General Lincoln, uh, with all due respects to the governor, 
Can you afford to spare Major Aria and myself at this time? I also feel that my place is here, Colonel Marion. I'm sorry to disagree with both of you, gentlemen. The office of the governor is a symbol of our free government. Our cause would suffer greatly if he were captured. As for my officers, drunk or sober, I'll have them here before morning. You have your orders, Colonel. At your service, sir. The enemy ships have opened fire, sir. Then you must leave at once, Governor. Our sergeant's help with those bags, right? Come, my dear. Fast, Peter. Too fast. Are we going to risk it or not? I'll try to draw them off. You make a run for it. If I can't, you'll have to shoot your way through, Peter. Be ready to move out fast. Yes, sir. Roger coming, sir. Stop him! Soldier. It's an American officer, sir. You must take him. Mount up, Dragoons! Ready, your small arms? Don't let him get away. Uncle Fran! Catherine, Delia! Uncle Fran's here! Oh, young Gabe. Hi, Uncle Fran. Boy, am I glad to see you. Oh, Uncle. Howdy, Mr. Marion. Welcome home safe and sound, sir. Ah, uh, well, safe. Oh, not so sound, I'm afraid. 
two stout fellas can be a hand down here. Are you hurt, Mr. Marion? You're wounded. Was it a good fight? Did you lick the redcoats? <laughs> no, hold on there. Just sprained my ankle. They sent me home because I was no more used to them. Well, you sprained it in the battle, didn't you? No. Just jumping from a balcony. <laughs> oh, Delia. Oh, oh, Colonel. Colonel, you're wounded. You, you wounded Marvel like that. He says it's whatever happened. Ah, uh, don't get excited, Catherine. Oh, uh, oh be careful now. Uh, oh, you hurt. Uh, open the door. Don't just stand there like your mouse catching flies. Come on, Colonel. Uh, careful. Uh, 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 right over there. All right. Uh, easy now. Uh, now you sit quiet like while I go get some hot water. Oh, get a knife too, Delia, will you? We'll have to cut this off. All right, sir. I will. No, Gabe, let Delia do that. I have another job for you. What is it? Right over to the Bedeau plantation, will you? Tell Mary I'd like to see her, but be sure and tell her why I can't come there. You leave it to me, Uncle Fran. And while I'm gone, will you speak to Catherine and Uncle Gabe? About what? About me joining the Army. If I'm old enough to mow hay and swill hogs, then I'm old enough to fight. <laughs> All right. I'll speak to them. Get a move on, will you? <laughs> How's the little fellow? Fine. Just fine. How's big Gabriel? He's fine, too. He'll be in for breakfast soon. Francis? Francis, I wish you'd speak to your brother. He's getting to be just like young Gabe, always talking about joining up. He... Well, he doesn't think he's doing enough. As if providing a decent living for a wife and family wasn't enough. Well, Catherine, there are things inside a man, things that he feels, like what's good, what's honorable, what a preacher might call things of the soul, I guess. Sometimes those things are more important to a man than food and clothing. You know that, don't you, Catherine? Yes, I know. He can go if he wants to. I won't stop him. Fran! <laughs> Gabriel. Say, news travels fast, especially with young Gabe spreading it. He sure thinks a heap of his Uncle Fran. No need to ask how you are, eh, Gabriel? Mm. Tell me, what is all this I hear about you whipping all the red coats single-handed and getting yourself wounded in the leg? <laughs> young Gabe, he's bound to make me out a hero. <laughs> all I deserve is a booby prize. I sprained my ankle. <laughs> Here, help Delia cut it, will you? Yeah. That's the boot, I mean. <laughs> How is the war going, Fran? We don't hear a thing. Not well. Charleston is under siege. Can't hold out much longer. Heaven ain't here nor there. It ain't up high alone. Heaven is the feeling that makes a sad heart glow. Heaven ain't any place a man can touch or feel. Heaven is a kindly word that makes a friendship real. Heaven is a candy stick so full of joy and bliss. Heaven is the happiness that comes
Mary. I didn't expect. I mean, the way young Gabe talked. Oh, but I'm so <laughs> glad to see it isn't serious. This has been one of the longest days of my life, darling. Just waiting with a little devil perched on my shoulder. Why a devil? Who else puts all those crazy thoughts into a man's mind? Like what, for instance? Like, why didn't you come? Mother was ill. I couldn't leave. Until after dark? What difference does it make? I'm here. Isn't that all that matters? Not entirely, Mary. These are troublesome times. The country, even families are divided in their sympathies. I know how your parents feel. They're loyal to the old country. It's their daughter I'm not quite sure about. I love you, Fran. Oh, you doubt that, too. You're straddling the fence, Mary. So make up your mind. Which side are you on? Yours, Fran. You've got to believe that. No, no more talk of war. Let's talk about the house. We're going to sit on the hill at Pond Bluff. Hmm? All right. <laughs> Oh. oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Does it hurt? No. No more than a sprained ankle is supposed to, I guess. I was hoping we could go up on the hill, have a picnic, maybe. I've gone there a lot just to sit and dream. I felt close to you there. In my mind, I've changed the plans a hundred times. And always I wondered if you'd approve. Four years. It's a long time to expect the girl to wait, Mary. I wouldn't mind if I could see the end. It goes on and on. Hatings. The burnings. The killings. How much longer is it going to last, Fran? How much longer? Now who's talking about the war? Get your uncle's horse saddled. You, Oscar, pack some grub on a fast lead horse. What's the matter, Peter? Cobb's dragoons are headed this way. They're arresting all the rebel leaders, and your name's on the top of the list. You better clear out, Frank. Well, scoot, you two. Get moving. Well, what about Clinton's proclamation? Is he going back on his word? Cornwallis took over and issued a new proclamation. He says that all so-called American patriots are traitors and will be put to death. Here, read it yourself. I've got to want some other folks and then clear out, too. My name's also on the list, but it's a little further down, seeing as I'm only a major. Where'll I find you, friend? Snow Island. Good. You take care of yourself. Ha! Now remember, you bathe the colonel's foot in this lotion and it'll get well quick, see? <laughs> They're coming. They're coming. Memorize that list of names I gave you, Gabe. Have young Gabe do it, too. Then destroy it. Tell them I'll give them a signal to come to the island. How? When the sky is filled with birds, that's the signal for the men to come. Wish I was going with you, friend. I know, Gabe. All right, Oscar, let's go. Are you Francis Marion? I'm his brother Gabriel. Tell Mr. Marion that Colonel Talbot wishes to speak with him. Colonel Marion is not here. That must be him, sir. Stay here and watch these people. Come forward. Oh!
I've had enough of this. Even bloodhounds couldn't catch that swamp fox in country like this. <laughs> swamp fox. That's the truth. You go easy, Miss Marion. Well, I'm gonna pick up that pack horse and get some of Mammy's magic lotion and cure your sprain. Come on, get out of here. All right, out here. You and the young fellow. Where is he? Oh, he was here a moment ago, sir. Under arrest? Why? For aiding the enemy to escape. Did you hear that, Kathy? He got away. Glory be. Well, he's not in there. I'll search the yard. Oh, never mind about the boy. Mount this one up. Yes. Gabe! I'm going with you. You stay with the baby. I'll be all right. I've done him no harm. If I can get away, I'll join Fran on Snow Island. Now, hold on. Sorry, lad, but my horse has gone lame and I can't be choosy. Now, pile off like a good fellow. No! I need this horse. We haven't time for a discussion. Well, bless me if it isn't young Gabe. What are you doing here, boy? I've got to get to Uncle Fran. They've arrested Uncle Gabriel. Tom's Dragoon? Yes. Looks like you brought the right horse in, because you two have to ride double. Gotta climb down. Sergeant, saddle up. Yes, sir. with me here. Sweet potatoes. Well, we can't expect to meet the enemy in any kind of force, but we can gather enough men around us to keep the rebellion alive. Swamp Fox. That's what Tarleton called me, and I'm much obliged to him for the idea. We'll hold up here by day and we'll strike by night. We'll hit him so fast and so often he won't know where to look for us next. And they'll have to divide their forces to run us down, and then we can pick them off one by one. Any idea we're going to hit him first? First, we've got to release those prisoners. To do that, we'll have to find out what they intend doing with them. Peter, will you take care of that? Hmm. Good. I like that job, Colonel, sir. I have a Tory brother who lives in Charleston, works in the supply department of the fort. Oh, we're still very good friends, and I often visit him as a lark, you know. I was in the theater and quite good at play acting, if I do say it. Well, let's strike out, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Peter, you and young Gabe get out in the countryside. Spread the signal around. Yes, sir. Colonel Jasper. The moment I hear from you, I'll call the men in. And if this... Oh, oh, if this concoction of Oscars is half as potent as it smells, I'll be on my feet before you get back. <laughs> Sergeant Jasper, you give a good performance now. Yes, sir.
Half a mole, governor. Oh, you're not going to stop me from taking this bottle of brandy to me, brother? Me, a loyal subject of his majesty's, God bless him, and him a servant under him and a suffering from the fever? Oh, say, old boy, you look a bit peaky. Put out your tongue. Just as I suspected, thick-coated like a cookie with Christmas frosting. Yeah, you take this bottle. You need it more than me, brother. Thanks. Good help. <laughs> your lumbago does move about, dear brother. As you approached, I noticed you're limping on your left leg instead of your right, where it was when you came last time. I say, aren't you observant? Enough of your jokes, I'm in a hurry. What are they going to do with the prisoners? Why? One of them's a friend of mine. Willing to trade. Where's Median? So Castor Swamp, northeast of Georgetown. That's funny. You know, Dalton's moving the prisoners north to Georgetown next Monday to stand trial. That is funny. Very funny. <laughs> well, I must be going. Take care of yourself, dear brother. The same to you. And remember, right leg. How's the fever? Gone. <laughs> Shows the brandy. That's too bad. If we weren't marching the prisoners to Georgetown Monday, I could bring you another bottle. Marching them to Savannah, not Georgetown. Besides, I'm still here today. Bring me another bottle. Lots of time. Fever may come back. Look. Better put that back. Might catch cold. Oh. Yes, Major, I chased Marion all through these swamps and lost him about there, I would say. Colonel Tarleton, sir. What is it? I've just learned that Colonel Marion is camped in the Socaster Swamp, northeast of Georgetown. Oh, in that case, he's covered a lot of ground, but then so can I. Major Smithers sent another detachment for the prisoners. I'm heading for Georgetown. Here's Mr. Jasper. Hi, Mr. Jasper. Not there. Oh. Ah. Welcome home, Sergeant. Ah, thank you, my noble lord. It's always good to be back, especially with the wretched traffic problems in Charleston and all. The prisoners are at the fort. They're to be marched to Savannah tomorrow to stand trial. Trial? For what? They're not criminals? According to His Majesty's officers, they are. And I might add, few come back. Do you have any idea the size of the uh, prisoner's escort? Not large, I'd say. And if my brother runs true to form, Tarleton and his dragoons will be headed for the Socasta Swamp, northeast of Georgetown, where you're supposed to be camped. <laughs> Good performance, Sergeant Jasper. Oscar. Yes, sir. Get everything with wings into the air. Yes, sir. Feeling better? Yes, it's much better now. My father sent me down to camp to talk to Major Ory. I almost got my head blown off. He thought I was a Tory. Yank you to keep it up. Yank you to bandy. Stick a feather in your hat and with the girl be handy. And there I saw a little keg, its head all made of leather. They pounded it with little sticks to call the folks together. <laughs> Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle, Andy. Stick a feather in your hat and make yourself real handy. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, just as well, Colonel. He was a Tory pig anyway. Uh, not that I stole him or anything like that. He just kept following me. So you uh, gave him a ride? Exactly, sir. Yes, I understand, sir. How many rounds of powder do you have? Twenty, sir. 
I found a full horn in a shed. Is that a Tory shed where you met the uh, pig, no doubt? Uh, uh, why, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sergeant, keep nine rounds yourself. Give the rest to Babcock and Calhoun here. Right, sir. And stick some feathers in your hat or a skunk tail or something. <laughs> but why, sir? Hey, you're one of Marion's men. Now we don't want to mistake you for a Tory. We, uh, we might swipe your powder horn. Just so as you don't mistake me for a turkey. <laughs> All right, men. All I want to say is, if anybody wants to back out, he can. Now's the time. We're a small band. We'll be outnumbered tomorrow. As a matter of fact, we'll always be fighting against odds. But it's not the number that counts. There are things that are more important. And we have two of those things on our side. That's the element of surprise and our reason for fighting. Now, the enemy... He's on a foreign land. He's not here because he wants to be. He's here because he's paid to be. Our reason for fighting is for our land, our home, and our country. And that's the difference. And that's why we'll win. Yeah. 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 Here you are, Mr. Marion. This old swamp fox has a mighty fine tail on his hat. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again. <laughs> no corn phone, got no honey. All we got is continental money. Won't buy bacon, hominy or grits. Roasting and possum is all we ever get. Swamp, swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again. Uh, we're riding with the swamp fox. There's a price upon his head. Yes, we're riding with the swamp fox till the enemy is dead. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again. Redcoats are bison the prisoners down Parker's Ferry Road. All right, men! Let him walk into our gun sights and blast him. Too dangerous for the prisoners, Peter. Sergeant Jasper. Yes, sir. See that trail down there cutting across the road, going into the woods? Oh, yes, sir. Leads down to the creek and then stops. The enemy won't know that if you don't tell them, will they, Sergeant? <laughs> Be a good toy friend to our redcoats and persuade them to take the shortcut to Parker's Ferry. Yes, sir. That all do, sir. We'll keep close by to keep contact with you, Jasper. Peter, if Jasper succeeds, I want you and McDonald to take one man each. Get down the trail there and try to slip in amongst the prisoners, take enough pistols with you and pass them amongst them. As soon as the firing starts, get over to the right flank of the enemy and crossfire. Any questions? No, sir. Sounds like it might be a lot of fun, sir. Yes, it just might be at that. Good morning to you, noble sons of his majesty. May the good Lord bless you. I see you made a good catch of uh, Yankee traitors. Fair catch, friend. You speak like a man I could trust. Is there any water in this heathen land which isn't crawling with insects and vermin? Uh, that would depend on where you were going, Captain. Oh, we're following this road to Parker's Ferry. Well, speak up, man. There's no fresh water between here and the ferry. That's still a sizable distance to go. Uh, but this little trail here leads right down past the prettiest little spring in the state of Carolina. Uh, it's closer to the ferry. Uh, shortcut, we call it. Oh, much obliged, friend. We'll take it. What? <laughs> Jacob. 
Jenkins. You dirty Tory skunk, I'd like to get my hands on you. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Why don't you yell real hard, Yank? Maybe the swamp fox will hear you and come free your hands. He can't be far away. All right, man. This trail is plain out. If we don't hit water soon, we must turn back on the road. Keep your chins up, men. Marion's close by. Here. Now, when the shooting starts, follow me. Your brother's trailing us. When they hit the redcoats and we take over, there's no reason we can't do some shooting ourselves. You come, noble soldier. Get along. Go on, scoot. There. It looks a lot better on you than it did on the first skunk that wore it. Yeah, it sure does. Captain, take this message to your General Cornwallis from the one they choose to call a Swamp Fox. Tell him as long as they're a free man in Carolina, the war will go on until every red coat is driven from our shore. You tell him that, will you please? Now be on your way. Ready! 
Much. God save pretty. Man, it's time for all good swamp foxes to take cover. I was just a little hornet sting we gave the enemy today, but he felt it, you can be sure of that. And he'd be looking for us quite soon. So everybody head for home, and when you see the sky above Snow Island filled with birds again, that's a signal to join me. All right, everybody, mount up. We are short of lead and powder, always fight with an empty gun. Only makes us shout the louder, we are men of Marion. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again. Got no blankets, got no bed, got no roof for our head. Got no shelter when it rains. All we got is Yankee brain. Swamp fox, swamp fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the swamp fox at. Swamp fox, swamp fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again. Next week, we bring you another stirring adventure in the life of that true hero of the War of Independence, Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox. This is the living legend of Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox. Robin Hood of the American Revolution, hero, patriot, guerrilla fighter. The Swamp Fox had other enemies who fought back of the lines. These were the Tories, those Americans who remained loyal to the crown betraying the cause for which the Continental armies fought so valiantly. It was a vicious kind of betrayal, brother against brother, father against son. The Tories pillaged and burned homes and farms of those they had known as friends. The Swamp Fox, feared by his enemies, honored by his friends. Women were fascinated by his charm. This is his life, his love. Why is that? I always had the feeling each kiss will be the last. Any house that celebrates a British victory deserves to burn. Right, men? Yes, right. Right. Burn them out. And that goes for your lady friend's place, too. She's just as guilty as all the rest. Mary Vidot can't help what her parents do. <laughs> she can if she wants to. I'm telling you, Mary Vidot's no better than any other trollop that holds hands with the red coat. Ow. I have no qualms about killing you, Rebel. So look over your shoulder and drop your weapons before I drop this handkerchief. Maybe you better take another look, Captain. Swamp Fox. For the most incredible adventures of heroism, patriotism, and romance, be with us next week when Walt Disney presents the Swamp Fox in Brother Against Brother. Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, tail on his hat. Nobody knows where the Swamp Fox at. Swamp Fox, Swamp Fox, hiding in the glen. He runs away to fight again.